What's up guys, Doug Polk here and welcome back for another episode of Poker Hands. Today we're going to be looking at a hand for Mike Postle that he actually lost on the river. Mike doesn't seem to lose on the river all too often, but he does occasionally. However, when he does, they tend to be hands more like this. So on that note, let's go ahead and jump into the action. I'm now looking at the Hindsight 2020 and it is a meme shirt for sure. It absolutely is, yeah. yeah I like it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Hard Benson, so, hey, we're going to win Jax. Jax. All right. Ooh, seven deuce. Postle oh. can't help himself. Oh, come on. No raise. Best hand in poker. Oh, that's sad. All right, so Postle clearly has decided that he's just going to play his position, and he's going to take the pot away. And since he's up against Jax, that may not be terribly hard. So he raises to 35, so Postle could be thinking, all right, well, he... Uh, I mean, can you put him Wait, on Jax? Oh, no, 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 no. Our hand begins with Stone's Poker making a clever joke out of Apostle's name and making it say Apostle, which is a disciple of Jesus Christ. You know, really funny stuff. Our hand begins at 1 2 3 with a straddle from under the gun, and a player who I don't believe is Bart Hansen raises with pocket jacks. However, the graphic says it's Bart Hansen, but the picture is not him. So this is not Bart Hansen, and I don't actually know who this player is. The action then folds to Postle on the button who looks down at seven deuce and decides to three bet. Now, I will say that this is not a good spot to three bet. When you three bet someone and they have jacks, you're going to lose that bet for sure. You only might make money on later streets. So I will say that if you could see cards, this would be a not good spot to go ahead and re-raise initially, but if you're planning on making more money on later streets when things get dicey, it could still be a good move for you. Again, this is from the perspective of if you're cheating and can see people's hands. So poker hands is going to have a different vibe here for a few days. Just bear with me. Anyway, the action folds back over to pocket jacks and ultimately the player does decide to make the call and let's take a flop. Okay. That's, okay. A, that's a great so, hand for Postle to I'm represent. Pretty sure. Um, I'm pretty sure he's going to win this hand. And ja and Hart is like, what the? All right, so now the question becomes, is he going to show or is he not going to show at the end of the hand? I, love, I always love to see the seven deuce. I think he, he's going to show. Absolutely. Yeah. I would I would bet five bucks he's going to show. People play seven deuce like it's aces. Some do. He bets 155. That's a great bet. I like that. It is. Unless, hand, it unless is. Hart is like, you know what, let's see what you do on the turn, buddy. I'm going to call this. Yeah, I think the flop comes ace, ace, queen, which is obviously a terrible board for pocket jacks. Now, if your opponent has an ace or a queen, you're behind, as well as if they had something like king's preflop. Pocket jacks makes a prudent check, and now seven deuce decides to bet the flop. Uh, this is a fairly reasonable situation if you were playing the seven deuce game, uh, which they may be. I'm pretty sure they're not, but if that is the case, this could be a very reasonable spot to bet. Uh, but I don't think that they are playing that given the commentators were talking about if he decides to show or not, because if they were playing the game, you have to show. So um, he's just doing seven deuce just for the lulls and then betting the flop here as a bluff, which is all in all fine. Now over to pocket jacks. I don't mind taking one off here. Now it is a situation where... Um, you know, you can be beat, but there are definitely bluffs your opponent can have. And if your opponent bets the turn, you can just let go right there because you will have a, a good amount of queens and aces in your range. Jax does decide the check call, and let's take a turn. Stick around. Uh, you know, he just Put can't, a king out. He can't just fold instantly. Mm. So if Hart is calling the flop here for that, for 150, that turn, he could just check call. Very interesting. Essentially, Apostle there. needs to think, Very interesting well, should back. I push... Should I barrel once more? Uh, and if he's going to barrel, he's probably going to have to make a sizable bet here. Um, not too big, because then it could show some weakness. <laughs> too big of a bet. Well, I think, yeah, I mean, it, if you're going to start with the seven deuce, you know, you, you got to keep going, I think. So, how much does Hart like his jacks? Oh, he hates them. Does he, he like it? Uh, does he like it? Three hundred and eighty dollars. Oh, but he's gonna call. Oh, see, okay. Postal here. He's even though he's in position. The turn comes a three, and once again, Postal decides to fire. Now back over with Jacks. What should we be doing here? And the main answer is to just fold. 
Even if you think your opponent is bluffing, you're going to have plenty of other spots where you have better hands. And so you don't need to have jacks in your range. In fact, having jacks here kind of sucks because the hands you want your opponent to have are hands like king jack suited, jack 10 suited, um, you know, bluff hands really essentially. And even though you do block ace jack, you actually block more of the bluffing range than you do the value. But if your range is just your hand because your opponent can see your cards, well, then you have to call some of the times. And this is where you really have to mix up that strategy. If your opponent knows your exact holding, you're going to have to sometimes be willing to call and sometimes will be willing to fold because your range is really just that one hand. And you got to keep your opponent who is a god and knows your hand guessing. It's a really important part of your strategy. So Jax does decide to make the call and let's take a river. Is not liking what's going on here. I'm sure. He is not. So that turn, I mean, that river um, could could help him, I guess. Um, possibly if he wants to represent um, catching that straight on the river, possibly. Um, so now does Hard does have a blocker, up. though, for that straight, so does it he, might not be convincing. He shoved. Possible with he the shoved. shove. This is our. How do you call? This is with it. Jacks. All right. Do what call? do you guys think? Let's say vote one for Postal. One for Postal, if it's going to get through. I don't think he calls. Or two for Hart Banson, who is going to tank for at least a little bit. I would say I wouldn't blame him for tanking for a couple Absolutely. minutes. Absolutely, yeah. Because Hell, I'd be trying to tank for 20 like, minutes if oh, I was him. Jeez, 2,000? Yeah. Yikes. Can I get yikes in the chat? All that all that money that you, you guys spent the that? last four hours building up, yeah. bit by bit, slowly, and patiently. And the stream is ending, too. So. If you want to lose it all right now. In the stream. Holding jacks with two aces and a queen on the board. Do you think the stream adds uh, an element to the decision here? I think? think absolutely it does because... Yeah? Especially if he's a known, uh, he's known, uh, Taylor. Well, right? uh, yeah, I mean, well, I, I mean, I to know. get a bluff by seven deuce, that's epic. I like it. It is. I absolutely. like it. That's good content, guys. Good content. Andrew Postel voting for Postel. Sandy Joy voting for Taylor Hart Banson. So we're kind of split here. You guys are split. Oh, he'll show. He'll oh, show. Oh, you guys are Absolutely. split. You, you guys do, are. You don't run this. All right, all right. At this right. stage, One, the, at this two, part of the three. night, when it's all winding down, and then not show when it works, when it when it goes when it when you pull so, it off. We're three and three on the vote here. Show. We're split vote. Show. We're thinking uh, Postal is uh, gonna. It's gonna go through. Get through. It's gonna get through. He, of course it is. Yes, absolutely. I mean, so it I, can't be absolutely if he's thinking this long. Huh? I mean, he doesn't want to just lay it down right. because That's he, wa he wants to call and he wants to be right. But there's too much of a chance that he's wrong. So how likely is it that an ace would be shoving here or a queen? Right, a queen could be shoving here. An ace wouldn't, right? Why? The river comes a 10, which is a kind of interesting card, actually. And once again, Jax checks it over to Postle. Now, in Postle's shoes, what type of hands do I most want to be bluffing with? Well, if I had King Jack, I can value that with my straight now. Um, but I, I really want to try and bluff with hands here that uh, block some of the most common hands that will be calling me, which really is hands that have an ace in them. Because there's an ace of diamonds and ace of clubs on board, uh, hands that are nice to bluff with are ones that can have a, a king or jack of um, hearts or spades because that would block ace king suited or ace jack suited fairly strongly. If we think about this for a moment, let's say that we had uh, jack ten of hearts as an example. Well, in that situation, we know our opponent does not have ace jack of hearts, so the only suited ace left is ace jack of spades, which would be a fairly good hand to bluff with. Some other logic could be maybe a hand like nine eight suited, nine eight of hearts, nine eight of spades. Again, blocking ace nine suited uh, or ace eight suited, which are again hands that can be calling. Now, I know you guys are like, look, we're not here for the actual strategy, Doug. We're here for the juicy drama on what's happening in this hand and is there cheating or not. But I think we're gonna at least give you something to think about for the road. Anyway, Postal goes with the uh, expert bet size of wagering the rest of it here on the river because his opponent is quite weak. So Postal does decide to bet 2.1 thousand and 1.3 thousand, a very big bet in a spot and a paired board. And, and good players tend to know in these situations your opponent can quite obviously have an ace. And so usually you want to avoid sizes that are too large because card removal becomes so significant. Back over to the situation we've got with Jax. What do we do here? Well, this is a spot where if you are trying to calibrate a reasonable range, you can obviously fold. But if you're concerned that your opponent may be cheating and or you have a tell on them, maybe you could look to make a fairly light call. And this is really the situation I've seen in a lot of the hands that Postle loses. He puts people to the test in situations that are very tough for them. And then when they make a huge call, 
then he loses. And those are some of the examples of pots that he actually loses. This, if anything, is evidence the other way. This shows that Postle is willing to run big bluffs when people have marginal to weak hands, and he only loses because of the call of his opponent. To be honest, this is a frankly kind of insane call. It's it's pretty impressive that he had a read on Postle or he just, I'm not sure exactly what happened or how he knew Postle was bluffing. But the point here is he does make a sick call. But this is the reason, another reason I wanted to bring up this hand. I want you guys to watch very closely with me what happens when he makes the call. Why? But he can't beat a what? Why not? I mean, the pot's big enough. Get max value out of your hand. Hmm. If you're sitting there with ace-queen and the guy's calling you down, maybe he's got ace-five, you know? If you have ace-five, I don't know if I'd do a shove all in, though. I We're watching this video right now in a very slowed down time version. And watch when the, his opponent makes the call, Postle has to flip his cards over. His opponent doesn't say anything. He's waiting to see Postle's hand before tabling his own hand. We can see his face the whole time. We can know that nothing is said. Now, once Postle flips his hand over, his opponent flips his hand over and throws it onto the table. When it hits the table, the cards spread, revealing his hand. Now, if we look at Postle's arms, he's going to throw his arms up in the air in a way that's like, what, you called me with that hand? But here's the funny part. He starts the movement before the cards are spread and he can see that it's pocket jacks. So his opponent doesn't say what he has, throws his cards on the table and they're stacked on top of each other. And then before they're exposed on the table, he throws his hands up in the air note in like, how can you call me with jacks? If you're bluffing on the river and you're uh, surprised that your opponent made a big call, it takes you a, a, a second or two for you to realize your opponent made a very light call. If your opponent calls and shows ace jack there or ace queen or something very strong, you're not like, what? How'd you call me with top boat? You know, that's not what you would do. That's an expression people use when they are caught bluffing by a hand that's very light. In fact, I can think of a time that that happened to me. He's still thinking about it. No, he's reaching. Oh no, my gosh. my God. No, wait. Whoa! Oh, my God. He calls. Oh, my God. <laughs> What a call! Wow. What a call! What a call! Wow! Oh my gosh! Wow! Oh, wow! Yes, I got owned there. But also, no, it takes me a couple of seconds to realize that I had just gotten owned. And that's the thing. You have to fully comprehend the ownage before you're able to then respond. But he doesn't do that. He responds and starts the motion of throwing his hands up in the air to be surprised at a hand before the hand has been revealed. So yeah, maybe he's just surprised the opponent had a hand, or maybe uh, he's got super razor sharp vision where he could see the exact hand the moment the guy went like this before he threw it. But what's more likely here, those things or that he was already ready to be surprised and then do this motion with his arms that looks very, very, very on purpose to me. And I know this is the thing, a lot of people are gonna say, well, you know, a lot of this stuff is not exact, sure, smoking gun evidence. But when you add all of these things up together, it's a lot of things that you have to explain. Thanks for joining me here today for Poker Hands, and I will see you guys again very soon. I got a lot of videos I got to make, and uh, I think I know what I'm going to be covering.